This is the 6.5 Creedmoor, and this is our caliber profile. It's a short action, long range shooting caliber that's popular among hunters and precision shooters. I think the reason that it's popular is because it has very low recoil and its inherent accuracy. So in this video though, you've seen this cartridge, but there are nine things that you doubtfully know about the cartridge. And so we have some really neat things to share. The first one actually required me doing a little bit of math and actually some fairly advanced math, but it's, it's why cool. I passed it off to him. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I, got, I need you to do some math for me today. <laughs> the question was at what distance from a shot would you hear the shot before it actually hit you? So this is a supersonic round. It is dodge distance. <laughs> this is dodge like at, distance. What, at what distance, if you heard a little, should you go? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the distance for a 127 grain, um, 6.5 Creedmoor, is about 1,525 yards. So if somebody takes a shot at you from farther than that, you might have a chance. Before that, <laughs> you're not even gonna hear it. And it's gonna take about four seconds to get there. That's so, where the sound catches up. Yeah, so the reason is obviously it's shooting supersonic when it, com when it comes out of the muzzle, right? It's going faster than the sound is, right? The, pr the projectile is. But at some right. point, the bullet slows sound down, down from sound. there and eventually the sound wave is gonna hit you before the actual projectile. So now you know, right? Okay, so that was just a fun fact. We actually have some really practical ones for you in this video as well. But also there's a complete write-up of this caliber profile and a lot. They're just pretty a ton neat, of I'm excited about data them. And when you should use it and when you shouldn't over on backfire.tv. Make sure you go check that out as well. Yeah, our goal is we're gonna build out caliber profiles for all the po popular calibers. So when you're looking and comparing them, like that's your spot to go. It's got everything in one spot. Okay, so the 6.5 Creedmoor, a major advantage of it right now is just how incredibly popular it is. So in our data analysis of all bolt action rifles produced today, um, everything we could find, I mean, we're looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of bolt action guns. 9.73% of all rifles, bolt action rifles, have a chambering available for 6.5 Creedmoor. Wow, that's incredibly high. That is number two of all bolt action rifles. Um, the winner is the 308 in terms of chamberings, just because it's very old and a lot of manufacturers haven't yet made the 6.5 Creedmoor that really is still only a few years old. But, um, it, it, is, it is the number two most popular in chamberings, but the number one seller for all bolt action rifles. And with the, the gun itself, that, that chambering being so widely available, means that the ammo is also usually widely available. Mm -hmm. This is just anecdotal evidence, but I've been doing a fair amount of ammo shopping lately, and every time I go to the store, a lot of the shelves are bare right oh, now. Oh, yeah but I can always find a mm -hmm. few options in 6.5 Creedmoor that aren't sold out because ammo manufacturers are making this stuff like crazy. At the very start of the pandemic, it was better to be shooting weirdo calibers yeah. because all the popular stuff ran out real quick. Uh -huh. Now, if you shoot a weirdo caliber, Can't find it's it. pretty hard to find, but ammo manufacturers are starting to catch up with the popular stuff. All right, next is the barrel life yeah. on the 6.5 Creedmoor. I care about this because I shoot a lot. Um, and so I will burn a barrel if, I, if I'm shooting that much over time. So the barrel life on a 6.5 Creedmoor rifle is 2,180 shots. Now some of you are wondering where, where that specific number came from. Um, we spent many, 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 many hours going through all kinds of experiences of how long it took people of, to burn out their barrels on a wide variety of, of calibers. And then we use that as training data to go through all of the popular calibers um, and create a formula that will work uh, to really show an accurate, you know, it's looking at the pressure of the, of the, uh, the max pressure of the cartridge. It's looking at how, how fast it's going through there, the caliber of the, the bullet weight. I mean, everything yep. to really analyze it. Um, and 6.5 Creedmoor does very well, 2,180 well. shots. You're not gonna be burning out barrels too regularly. If you've got a hunting rifle that you're gonna, you're gonna take a, you know, a few shots to prep and then you're gonna take it out hunting each year, 
You this is a lifelong care. barrel. Yeah, this one's going to last you, yeah, mm -hmm. probably a couple of generations at least. In that case, you might not be as concerned about it, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's, So you're going to be perfectly happy shooting something. But man, some of these, I mean, the 28 Nosler, right? Oh my Less goodness. Less than a thousand rounds and that thing's gone. So mm -hmm. if you're if you're going to be taking this thing out A lot out of the Weatherby cartridges yes, too. Yes, uh, most of the Weatherby cartridges, if you're going to be out there um, on a Saturday doing some long range shooting, if that's a hobby of yours, you are going to burn through a barrel. So uh, 6.5 Creedmoor is going to do really well there. Now, a lot of people hear that 6.5 Creedmoor is a great long range shooting gun and somehow there's a quick mental leap to, oh, it's a great long range hunting <laughs> cartridge. And it just isn't. Um, we'll talk about the long range shooting capabilities, which are fantastic. But for long range hunting, it really is a pretty poor choice. And here's why. If we conform to the traditional rules of 1,500 foot-pounds for elk and 1,000 1, foot-pounds for deer-sized game, and again, if, and yeah. I realize there are problems with those, you'd really only go 310 yards for elk, and you could go to 502 yards for deer to maintain 1,000 foot-pounds. However, um, at 430 yards, you're going to drop below 2,000 feet per second, and so it really just depends on which particular bullet you're shooting. Some bullets will not expand properly at, at slow of a speed. So you may not even get to 500 yards. So for long range hunting, it's actually a pretty poor choice. Right. Now I think it's a fantastic hunting gun, um, just not a fantastic long range hunting gun. Right. And we'll talk about elk later. Exactly, so if you're hunting at sub 300 yards, like a lot of you Great are, choice. it's gonna be a perfectly good hunting rifle all the way up through elk. Um, okay, the next one is the recoil. The recoil on the 6.5 Creedmoor is low, mm -hmm. um, to the point that, I don't know, I mean, we've put dozens and dozens of rounds um, per day each through these we guns. We have a giant bucket and of 6.5 Creedmoor cases <laughs> back there. Shot. Um, but oh, let me give you just some of the numbers here and you'll see on the screen how those numbers compare to some other popular cartridges. So theoretical free recoil, so this is just the theory. Assuming a nine pound gun. Right, it's 11.02 with an 8.88 velocity. Mm -hmm. So theoretical is a is nine, nine pound, pound gun. gun. Okay. So as typically configured, this is neat. Um, so we went through again, thousands oh, right. yeah. thousands of guns um, and we saw what is the average weight one. of the guns in each caliber and then we put that number in here to see what it really is for example you look at the at the free recoil of a 50 bmg and you say oh my goodness it really will murder you when you try to shoot it but on average they're like 40 pounds yeah. and so it's actually not that crazy of a recoiling gun so that's what this as typically configured it's a cool number right. that we will have for all the calibers in fact we have it in our excel sheet we just got to build out our pages exactly so you can see the numbers here 13.12 with an 11.56 velocity now those numbers again without a comparison maybe don't mean a whole lot to you so here at backfire we have created a rating mm -hmm. a, a recoil rating a real recoil rating that takes these numbers into account and it rates basically every cartridge from zero to a hundred. So you can see on a scale of zero to a hundred where this lands, this is a 33. Mm -hmm. And really anything under 50, very few shooters would have any kind of flinch. Uh, above 50, it's going to start impacting a lot of people's shooting. Absolutely. Okay, it's a short action rifle. It's a short action cartridge. Um, what that basically means is it's about under 2.5 inches, I think it's 2.5 to 8 inches, um, the case overall length for the 6.5 Creedmoor. And so you have a physically smaller um, action, or at least you can, depending on how the gun uh, is made. And so it's going to save you a little bit of weight, a little bit of length um, on the action. It's, it's a nice thing to have um, when most calibers are going to be long action calibers. And so we do get some of those benefits by being short action. Yeah. It is a long short action. It is a long one. It's on the long <laughs> side of short. Okay, let's come back to elk. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing with 6.5 Creedmoor, it, it kind of ends up falling into the category of your, your smaller hunting rifles, your mm -hmm. deer rifles. In Great a lot deer guns. But it's actually capable as an elk cartridge. 
pretty sweet. So we did a little test. I know this is a very controversial point and we're just like, we just want to put the facts and you can decide what to shoot. For me personally, in the end, I'm not going to hunt elk with 6.5 Creedmoor. Sure. My son is 11. It's the biggest caliber he can shoot. Not quite even to 7 millimeter 08. It's yeah. just what he can shoot. So if I were taking him elk hunting, we would use it. But only a broadside shot and probably under 250 yards. Um, it's got to be a good shot. So we set up a cool test. Uh, we got carpet to represent the hide of an elk. We got two uh, half inch pieces of wood. So an, a full inch of dense um, MD, MDF yep. and then a full ballistics gel, a half inch of wood and another ballistics gel uh, to represent, you know, the bone. If you hit a shoulder or something, what kind of penetration are you going to get? So we shoot it with a, t a 243 goes through the hide, through the bone, um, through a full ballistics gel, bounces off the rib, the other piece of wood, and comes a couple inches back. Then we shoot the same thing with a 6.5 Creedmoor. It makes a bigger dent in that second piece of wood. But very similar. But it's about the same thing. Yeah. 280 Ackley improved, really similar to the 6.5 Creedmoor. And then we shoot the thing with a traditional elk gun. It, blows through the whole test. A 30-06 just straight through. And so when I saw that, I thought, dang. So when you're hunting elk, you, I mean, I want that when yeah. I'm hunting an elk. And so I want to see that kind of performance. But then we did another thing. Um, we took that 30-06 and it had blown through everything with a Barnes TTSX, which is a very tough um, controlled expansion bullet. Um, and then we switched to a different bullet. Um, I can't even remember what it was, uh, but just your, your regular old bullet. I can't even remember what it was. Um, and it performed almost identically to the 6.5 Creedmoor. In fact, this is it. It really just dented that second set of wood. Um, it didn't uh, penetrate past it. And so I guess the point is, can you kill an elk with a 6.5 Creedmoor? Yes, and we talked about, uh, I'd really be careful how you would do that. Um, but definitely not at long range, definitely not at bad angles, or you're really risking some things. And another key learning there is that yes, the caliber, the cartridge, it matters, but the bullet matters a lot. A lot, too. yes. Um, potentially even much more, as long as you're shooting a cartridge that's capable. Mm -hmm. And again, we're saying 6.5 Creedmoor is capable with those caveats. Mm -hmm. um, but bullet makes a, a big difference. And we're going to be testing that. We, we have are. right over there, <laughs> pretty bunch. much every bullet type in existence. Um, and we're going to load them all the same, same velocity, everything. Um, and we're going to do a penetration test um, so that awesome. you guys can see what it does. I'm excited to see that. All right. I want to talk about the inherent accuracy of the 6.5 Creedmoor. This is really one of the big things that's, that's a standout with the 6.5 Creedmoor and part of why it's so popular, everybody talks about how it's inherently accurate. It's like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a few things that make it so that this bullet um, is less impacted by drag and wind. I'll be back. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, and, and here's what it is. Compared to other similar bullets, this has a relatively short, but also a relatively wide or relatively fat cartridge. And what that does is by having a shorter cartridge, there we go, here's some to compare with. By having that relatively short cartridge, that powder burns more instantaneously rather than having this part burn before the front part. And that more instantaneous burn causes just a more uniform ex uh, explosion and expansion to happen. It also has a, a slightly longer neck than you may see, um, especially on a short action. Um, and that allows you to vary the seating depth when you're reloading uh, to get something that's really going to work well. Plus, it's just in a caliber where you have just tons of bullet availability, so you yeah. can find stuff with the high sectional density, the high BCs, um, that's going to aid in accuracy. And that sectional density is, it is pretty important. What that means is, basically, you have a lot of weight with not a lot of, um, of surface area for, mm -hmm. for that wind to impact. And so that's why there's just less drag on the bullet and less impact from crosswinds. And so it is going to shoot a little bit straighter than, and a little bit flatter even than the 308. But, but that's the one to talk about next. Yes, exactly. 
It's not that flat shooting. <laughs> it's not. It's not. Uh, we hear all the time that it's a great long distance shooting caliber, and it is. Yeah. Fully agree. But it's not because it's super flat shooting. It's not the laser beam that a 28 nozzler is. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you flat. look at the at the ballistic it that looks like data. It, it's whoa. Um, yeah. Mind blowing, right? Uh, but they're putting a lot of powder behind that and it's yeah. going to hurt the shooter as much as the thing that's shot. <laughs> um, the 65.5 Creedmoor, the thing about it is, yeah, it's a little bit more flat shooting than the 308. But compared to most um, modern right. in the last 10 year cartridges, it doesn't stand out as being particularly flat shooting. The reason that it's very popular for long distance shooting, in addition to the accuracy, um, is that there's not a ton of recoil for pretty good um, uh, results in terms of flat shooting and the trajectory. And so at a thousand yards, if I'm trying to hit a gong in a competition, I shoot, boom, it throws me off target and I can't tell that I shoot high, low, left, right. Uh -huh. I can't correct. Right. And so recoil becomes very, very important. And so um, is it flat shooting? Yeah. Is it real flat shooting? Nah, not really. Don't buy it for that reason. Exactly. Check out our caliber profile on backfire.tv. We're putting a ton of work into these and we're gonna come up with a lot more videos like this on different popular calibers. But go over there, we talk about, you know, how does the 6.5 Creedmoor perform on, you know, every kind of game there so you can see what's appropriate to hunt with it. You can kind of um, see the exact trajectories at distance and stuff. Those are really cool resources when you're doing your research for a new gun caliber.